The 6000 series oscilloscope has six trigger modes available and they are selectable from a pop down menu on the bottom left hand side of the screen. The first mode is called none and it just gives a untriggered display so if a signal is removed no signal applied to the input a, a zero display is seen so this can be just like a babysitting mode looking if any signals are present on the uh, input to the channel. The first triggered mode is called auto trigger and it will try to automatically provide a trigger level so here we see the trigger point has automatically selected the midpoint of the pulse and give a stable trigger display. The next mode is called repeat so this is again running and looking for a repetitive trigger. If the signal is removed in this case it will not trigger. So if I change the time base for example there's no display until the trigger appears and the signal is present. So now the signal is there present and it will trigger. The next mode is called single. So this is going to provide just one trigger and fill the memory. So the memory selected here for example is one million samples. So just as an example I could increase that to five million samples and there is no signal present so I know I can run. So it's now waiting for a trigger event to fill that memory. So applying the signal to the input so we can see a trigger has occurred, it's acquired that data and stopped so it's filled five million samples. In fact we can see something interesting here that it has gone high and stayed high. So this is showing us that there's something different about the first pulse in the sequence. So we'll repeat that experiment with a, a wider time base. So let's go for 10 microseconds. So again we'll run and switch on the signal source and indeed we can see that that first pulse is wider than all the pulses occurring after the first event. So this is a typical application of single trigger where we're looking for unique pulse train of the data. The next option down is called rapid and this is going to again do triggers as fast as possible and fill the selected memory. So here we can select how many buffers we wish to fill. So if we select five buffers every time we hit the space bar it will actually fill the buffer. So we run the acquisition so now we're providing triggers into the five buffers. So again we just increase the uh, time base sweep rate. So here we can see they are slightly different every time we're filling those buffers. So it fills the five buffers and stops so it's filled five buffers of five million samples each and now it's possible to step through the buffer. So this is buffer five of five and that's buffer four so we can see each one of those buffers is slightly different. Another way of viewing it is with the buffer overview and here we can just again step along so it gives a very quick graphical overview of the acquired data. The final special mode is called ETS and, and this is again a fast acquisition but it's using the very fast high resolution it's digitizing the signal as fast as possible to give more data. So again we can run in this particular mode and we'll be able to see that we've got more data being collected here. So if we return to the normal mode we can see there's not so many events and back to ETS. So it runs the digitizers as fast as possible to collect as much data looking for random events etc.